This project is jointly supported by a grant from the Virgin Islands Council on the Arts and the National Endowment for the Arts in Washington, D.C., a federal agency, and the Virgin Islands of the United States Centennial Commission, which is celebrating its 100th anniversary from 1917 to 2017, and the VI Lottery, where you can just imagine the possibilities. Bettina Jules Lara, your host for the Centennial Celebrations. This is Your Life Series. We're going to be interviewing Mr. Kevre Hendricks, the band teacher here at the St. Croix Educational Complex. It is such a pleasure to interview you. I mean, a six-time Road March winner. If you can just tell us briefly how you got started on this journey. I know that we mentioned it started at 13 years old, but if you can just inform us. Um, I started playing music at 13. Um, that was in Elena Christian with Miss Fabrica Bryson. Um, I followed her here to Sinclair Educational Complex when it opened in 1995. As I graduated from the Educational Complex, I decided to major in music at the University of the Virgin Islands. And um, I started that at age 16. And um, one of the nights that I was in the room practicing, um, I got the offer to participate in the former show, Brassarama at the time, for Al Baptiste with the Express Band. And um, that's when I met Al, and he, he knew my mom, so he told her, he said, well, you know, I met your son, so I think I'm going to offer him a job doing Calypso shows, etc., during the Christmas season. And that was actually my start into the soca realm, playing horn mm -hmm. for the Calypso shows every, every Christmas. Okay, and you also um, do some songwriting. Tell us a little bit more of your, your marching band that you have here at the Educational Complex. Well, the, the marching band or the, the music program on a whole, um, the way that the program is structured is, is structured around preparing the students to be able to function post high school. So if the students try to further their music career, whether it be in college or the military or even traveling the world or whatever, I try to train them to the point that they can function at that level. Um, I am classically trained, so I put a lot of my attention on the classical aspect. Because once they understand the classical aspect, it's easier for them to transition over into the marching aspect. So with the, with the marching band, my students laugh because I have this joke that I say, my marching band goes nowhere until my concert band is ready. Okay. So um, yeah, um, the kids are great. I, I really love working with them. Um, I write the music for them, and because of the way they're prepared with reading the music, etc., they do very, very well. Yeah, very, very well. And um, in terms of the road march, if you can just tell us um, a little bit more of perhaps one of your favorite, because you have won six times. Um, is there anyone that stands out in terms of a challenge, you know, that you may have overcome in order to, you know, be that champion? If I had to say one that was the most challenging, it would be number three. And the name of that song was People's Choice. Um, we actually thought that there was no way that we could possibly win that year. And um, it was just a, a compound of just negative factors just falling at the same time. So even after the parade, mm -hmm. our trailer collapsed on top of us. Wow. So um, I thought that that year for me is very special. Um, because it was extremely difficult. And I've always had the pleasure in the most recent years, even when you're coming down in the parade, to see you, you're one of the individuals who are walking on the ground while the band is actually up on the truck. Yes, yeah, it's, it's more fun that way. <laughs> it's, 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 it's more fun. Um, my, my concept for, for life on a whole is you live once. Right. And um, I say once your eyes stop, or once your eyes close forever, 
that's it, you're not coming back. So I try my best to just live my life and enjoy myself as much as possible. Okay. Tell us a little bit about the, um, the fusion band. Oh. Um, the original fusion band started many, many years ago uh, under the direction of Ms. Valrika Bryson. It actually started as a, as a entity of the Synchro Educational Complex. I had nothing to do with it at the time. I was actually in college when Fusion Band started. Um, the title then was Synchro Educational Complex Caribbean Fusion Band. Wow. Right. Um, as I came back and I graduated from college, I used to assist Ms. Bryson with doing different things in the school. And I think in about 2005 or six, mm -hmm. she decided that she was going to move on to do the more cultural aspects. Mm -hmm. And as she moved on to do the more cultural aspects, she gave fusion to myself and Roy Vieli, okay. um, Sergeant Major in the Virgin Islands National Guard. And um, we separated it from the school altogether. And we shortened the name to Fusion Band. And that's basically the, the back story. Mm -hmm. um, we have some of the other members that actually used to attend Central, so it's not a complex-oriented group. Okay. It's, it's actually well, a well. fusion of, of people. Okay. Yeah. Now you talk a lot about culture. Um, how is it that you tie your culture into the music? Well, um, oh, culturally, um, the, the way I was trained and um, the way that the art was explained to me mm. it is uh, a play on words. Um, it's used to, as a double innuendo, to basically trick the mind into hearing one thing, but it actually means something else. Okay. So a lot of soca songs, or especially the older ones, um, they may be speaking about a cup, yeah. but actually be speaking about something else. Mm -hmm. And um, what I try to do with that, especially for me in the classroom, is I try to show the students the connection of how you can use the classical training but still get that filtered into using that in the soca realm. So that usually works well with me. So Mr. Hendricks, I see this is where the music takes place. This is your studio here at the Educational Complex. Yes, this is where the magic happens. This is where Fusion Band records all of its albums. And um, this is where I also do projects that have to do with the school as well. Okay. Yes. So it's also my office. but office aka the studio okay. so um, here I'm working on a project and this is actually going to be the introduction for our album this year um, my lead singer Darnell Phillips um, with all the violence and the stuff that's happening in the community he decided that he wanted to say something about it and sing something about it and um, he basically poured his heart out in the track and um, as he as he sang it I created the beat around his lyrics okay. and um, his emotions so um, this is a studio session. Okay. So we'll take a listen. Yeah. Some people get up to some news that a brother died. We have to see another mother cry. And if tears wasn't falling down, we would have seen a better future. But revenge is what we're seeking now. So everybody turn a shooter. We never planned to bust this now. But we could have never get justice. So. Basically, um, it's clear what he's talking about. Right. So, um, I made sure that I wanted to catch him in his purest form. Mm -hmm. So, I basically brought him into the studio. I kind of shut the lights off and I just let him sing. I think it's a beautiful song, and I'm also noticing that you guys have different um, genre of music. Yeah, um, people think that we only do one style, but that's the furthest thing from the truth. Um, we do almost every genre. Okay. We, we've done reggae tracks. Okay. We went to the Virgin Islands. The VIPB had the VI Cops show. Mm -hmm. We did the official theme for that. Okay. Um, we've also done reggae tracks in support of the troops in Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, yeah, we do all types of different types of music. So we're not just localized to Soka and Calypso only. You mentioned two important things, the crime that's taking place here in the territory and also um, the music that you did for um, Afghanistan because I know your, some of your roots come through the National um, Guard as well. Yes. Um, I've been in, a member of the National Guard for 17 years now and um, honestly one of the better decisions that I've ever made, um, the discipline um, that it's taught me and also it's 
I've had the experience in being able to travel to different places because of my military experience. And how do you explain to your students um, about the crime that's taking place here in the territory? Well, um, I have conversations with them. Um, I sit with them. Um, one thing that my students can always say is I try to be brutally honest with them. So sometimes, you know, the, the natural nature of people is they, they make comments and they say certain things based off of the emotion at the time. Okay. But sometimes as I sit and I speak with them and I explain maybe the other side, then they see both sides and then they can understand well maybe this wasn't the best decision that I could have made at the time. Mm -hmm. so, um, I think that's that's one of the most important things. I think that having dialogue with kids is, is very, very important. And I think that um, as an adult, we need to remember that we too were once children. And once they understand that we made some of the same mistakes that they are making, mm -hmm. they're more apt to listen to you. Then. And, and even so with the different genre of music, I know some of your music have a sexual overtone. And how is it that you balance the two as a um, band teacher here at the high school and also, um, you know, dealing with the industry because, you know, sex sell. Sex does sell. Um, I code switch. When I come to work, I am Mr. Hendricks. I come to work with my shirt and tie and I operate in a particular fashion. And, um, when I'm being a performing artist, I am totally different. I'm being a performing artist. And, um, I think that's important for me to show my children as well because they don't... It, it's good to show them that you can do multiple things at the same time. Um, there's a time and a place for everything. And they understand that when I'm at work to address me as such. Right. And they understand that when I'm being a performer, that I am being a performer. So right. I think some of my students actually take that and they utilize that for themselves as well. Well, you know, we have the centennial celebrations coming up. Um, what are your thoughts? If we live in peace. Um, I think it's important that everybody pays attention and understands what is going on with the centennial celebration. Um, to know where you're going, you have to know where you came from. Okay. And I think that over the years, um, as we go through the transfer ceremonies every year, I think that not everybody understands the significance of what transpired. And I think that um, as we get closer to the celebration, um, I know for me, I'm going to make it my business to try to to push the issue and educate my students as to what the, ce the celebration really means. So I see that we're watching your um, second video here, Get On, and it's such an um, exciting video. I see everyone is so energetic and expressing the carnival spirit. Mm -hmm. um, yes, this was actually our sixth road march. But, um, this one was written by Hudson Brown, and um, it will be aired on Temple very shortly. Um, it will be our second video to actually air on Temple. Wow, that's a great job there. I see you're holding your bass guitar. Um, tell us a little bit more. Paula. Paula. Um, I'm in Parliament. I was surfing the internet and I went on this website named Musician's Friend and I saw this beautiful bass guitar. So I decided that I was going to order it and I called the company and as I placed the order, they said that they were out of stock. Oh wow. But they said that I could pre order it and then when it came into stock, they would actually ship it. Okay. And um, three days later, <laughs> Paula showed up. Oh wow. So, what they thought was out of stock was actually, actually out of stock. Yeah. And since then, this is actually my favorite bass guitar. I have four, but this is the favorite out of, of the four. So is this the bass guitar that you come down the road with during um, yes. Adult Parade? Yes. Oh, wow. This is the bass guitar that I come down the road with for Adult Parade. So this is the um, famous Paula. <laughs> this is, yes. Okay. Yes, if you want to say that. It's my bass boom boom. That's okay. what I say. Yeah. Okay. This is Paula. Okay. Yeah. Nice. I see that you have quite an impressive resume in the music industry as we just watched um, your second video. Could you tell us a little bit more about any of your major accomplishments? Um, it's a hard question. Um, if I had to say that I've accomplished anything that would be major, I would attribute it to the success of the education.